this thing? <laughs> Frankenstein coffee that's, roaster. That's Frankenstein coffee roasting. We are here to show you how we like to roast coffee. Jeff, what we got? We've got our scale. We've got eight ounces or half a pound of coffee from our good buddy, Martin. Oh yeah, we love Martin. We do. We are two and a half pounds in and uh, just having a good day. So we've got, we've already roasted. We've got a few batches here. Yep. We've been going for some darker roast that we like to call warm leather or brown sugar and raw hide. And this batch in particular, we're, we call it Paisley. So we're going for more of the medium roast and we call it Paisley because it's got some really good floral taste, some citrusy fruity taste in it. What is it? Uh, what's the fruit? Citrus and plum. 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 That's yeah. right. And, uh, you know, there's lots of fancy coffee roasters you can buy online, but we wanted to show our method, the uh, Frankenstein grill roaster. It is interesting. So, this was a video you watched where the guy was somewhere and he had an old uh, peanut oil can that he had turned into a roaster with a drill. And uh, so then, as luck would have it, we were on a trip, uh, all of us on staff. We stopped by good old Bucky's. Oh, Bucky's. Oh, Bucky's. <laughs> and uh, we kind of saw this at the same time and our, our, our eyes lit up and uh, we started to dream about what we could do with this barbecue grill from Bucky's. And so this is what we have come up with. Yeah, and all it is, it's a tabletop grill. We pulled the grate out. We put a hole in either side, put our threaded rod in, and then we found this canister on Amazon. Which is for coffee roasting, actually. That's what it's made for. Yeah. So, okay. And then we made our own propane burner out of a metal pipe. We cut some holes in it, mm -hmm. made a homemade Venturi system, and then connected it to our propane down here. This was fun to learn about. This was fun. That was a learning curve. Yeah. This one was a few great videos on YouTube and some help and uh, just trial and error, but very little error. Really, yeah. we kind of figured it out really quickly, didn't we? So the propane goes through here and these on the side actually suck air in to mix air with the propane and then it comes out this tube and then the way we rotate we've got a little it's actually a burner cover with some tin foil in there to catch some of the chaff but the way we rotate it we just hook it to this drill with a zip tie and it rotates the canister and then we've got two temperature probes that we've mounted in here our newest addition yeah we just put these on today yeah before we were paper clipping them on the inside, which worked really well. It did. And then they run to this thermometer right here that tells us what the temperature inside is. And then we just listen and, and wait. And we listen for the crack. Yep. So we're gonna roast, we're gonna do a batch. So let's light her up. Fire. Fire! And we like to preheat and pre-charge it. Um, let it get up. Down. 460 degrees or so at least what this reads on here that's a little mm -hmm. higher than what some things tell you but at least for this setup yeah. what we've learned is that's a really good temperature to get to and then we put the beans in so when our probes are higher today because we just installed these today they used to be about here so maybe that's got something to do with it yeah we uh if any of you have ever roasted coffee before it's a very interesting process it is and there's, so interesting. there's lots of factors in it that change the crack time and there's you got your first crack and your second crack and the slightest little variables mm -hmm. can have the biggest change in when that crack happens. Yeah. We are already getting up to temperature. So what we're gonna do, we've already oh, roasted sure. a few, so we're fairly charged already actually. We're gonna put on our special heat resistant gloves yeah fairly good Amazon purchase here yeah they've done, they've done pretty well done well yeah. and I'm gonna get our drill ready to go and uh, 
Are you ready? I'm ready. Here so, we go. All right. Open the basket. Open the drill on. Okay. And then what I'll do, and you close in. There we go. We're rotating. We'll see you when you're good and delicious. eight and a half and we just heard the first crack in there and there goes the magic the magic's happening so for what we're going for we're going to wait till the end of first crack and we're going to pull so i'm going to let this play and let y'all listen to this first crack with the squeaky drill When this finishes, what we're going to do, we've got a fan blowing down with a window screen on top of it. I'm going to turn it on and we're going to put the beans to cool them on top of that fan in a bag we have. I wish y'all could smell this. We could do smell a vision. Smell a vision. It's just a beautiful thing. And this is right. actually, I think, the best so far today. We've got a good... Yeah, I think we're through first crack. Turn off the gas. We like to give it a little, little spin. It helps spin some of that chaff out of there. Jeff, I'm going to hand this to you for a second while I turn. I'm going to pull the battery. To turn that. Unscrew that. And then the way we've got it rigged, we can just pull, take it right on out, that guy out. And we actually bought these little bags for a way to test roast it. Keep shaking it out. Open it up. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm doing this one-handed, that's why it's a little bit harder. I'm gonna pull this over here. We did a batch directly on the window screen, because I know some of you are gonna be like, he's got the screen on there, why not just leave it on there? We did do a batch on just the window screen, and some of the beans stuck to the screen. And so at such a small batch, it's just easier to do that. We're gonna dump this out in just a second in this tray. All right, it's only been a minute or two, but this fan works so good. We're gonna, that is completely cool. It's completely cooled off. Let's pull it, we're gonna dump it into this tray right here so we can get a good look at the coloring and make sure we got a good consistent flavor. And then we're gonna crunch on one of them beans. Now 
Now the real test, Jeff, is the uh, taste test. Cheers. Cheers. Instant. Instant. I got all the florals. All the citrus and the plum. There's the citrus. The citrus is on the back end of it. And I tasted the plum. You're right. The kick, the kick of the, the citrus was on the back end. The plum was on the front end. Mm -hmm. No brown sugar at all. No brown all sugar. All the florals. Yep. Whereas in the worn leathers, it's brown sugar at the front end. Well, we can show, I suppose. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah, you can you can see the difference in those beans. Very floral. Mm hmm And very um, uh, darker. It's just got a shine, a little yep. bit of a shine to it. It's not burnt. Nope. No burnt taste in it. That's perfect. Pretty cool. All right, there you have it. That's how we roast coffee from. Martin and the Grandas from Ecuador. Uh, if you look them up, we'll put their IG and everything and information in the description. It's Siempre Verde Coffee. And man, they are just an amazing, amazing family in Ecuador. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep roasting. We'll see y'all later.